Howdy everyone! For today's Jolly Lark, we're checking out the new Dustback Helamites and how they can be used for other projects. As soon as I saw this kit, I knew I wanted to get these into my insect-themed army, but I wasn't sure how hard it would be to convert these and use these as a Beast of Nurgle for Age of Sigmar. The bugs look great. I thought they'd be about the right size based on how big they are relative to the riders, but I wasn't sure how hard they'd be to get the riders off and convert them into a more... Uh, Age of Sigmar, or less 40k looking minis. So let's check it out. Now you get four of these in a box. Um, the first thing that I was really happy to see is that they, uh, they're they pretty easy to put together. This is a couple pieces I've already glued together. The legs fit neatly into the, the holes. These are these are not complicated kits. They are mono pose. You probably could repose the legs without too much difficulty. This is what I was really excited to see. The riders are totally separate, which is gonna make converting these into Beasts of Nurgle a lot easier. The only thing that you've got here is a little nub on the back that's kind of a, a little bit of a saddle, but I think that that's gonna be really easy to clip off, sand down, and turn this into a, an unridden beast. So this is going to end up being about the easiest possible conversion that you might want to do. Um, but I'm going to show it to you nonetheless, kind of give you a sense of if you're thinking about using these for something else. This little saddle bit on the back, I'm just going to snip that off where it protrudes above the insect's carapace. Kind of do a little rough work with some snip snips. Then I'm going to get in there with a, a hobby knife and because the surface of this bug's carapace is pretty smooth, it's it's not hard to just shave that saddle bit off there. Grab a little sanding stick, a coarse sanding stick, and just kind of give that a little bit of work on the bottom to smooth off the bit where that little saddle nubbin used to be. All right, cooking show style here. I'm gonna show you one that's already assembled that I've already done that with. Um, so we've shaved off the saddle off the back, sanded it down, and put it on a 60 millimeter base that a Beast of Nurgle would be on. Uh, straight out of the box, these come with oval bases um, for Necromunda, but because I wanna use these as Beasts of Nurgle uh, in Age of Sigmar, we don't want that. The back legs sit on these kind of flat pancakes which just overhang the 60 millimeter base a little, little bit, but it is, it's close enough that the, this is gonna be super easy to just shave those off. I'm gonna try to be careful not to cut off any of the fleas, cool little foot bits there. Now, size-wise, um, this is pretty close to what you're gonna see for a Beast of Nurgle. Um, Beasts of Nurgle are on a 60 millimeter base, so you can kind of get a sense of that. Um, the Beasts of Nurgle, according to somebody on the internet, are a little bit taller at about six centimeters tall. This cute little guy clocks in at about four and a half centimeters. So the actual Beasts of Nurgle might be a little bit taller, but model height doesn't matter that much in Age of Sigmar. It's about the right same length and a similar width too. It's a little spindlier. Um, but honestly, if you're playing against anybody who isn't happy with this as a Beast of Nurgle, maybe you need to rethink your decisions. So for the bases, I'm going to speed through this at 10x real quick. Um, basically, I'm doing the same techniques that I did on the previous Hive bases video. If you want to see what's going on here in more detail, check that video out. I'll put a link in the description below. Um, but it's using the Honeycomb Louvered Grid and the Vallejo Texture Paste to create an insectile hive base for all of these bugs. And there you have it. So that was not that hard of a conversion. That in fact was such an easy conversion. I don't know if you can hear my air quotes that you know it almost doesn't count as a conversion at all. But as you can see, pretty quickly you can then use these bugs for other purposes and other projects. I think they're gonna make a great beast of Nurgle and I'm gonna paint them up to go well with the yellow and black wasp plague drones that are in my wasps of Nurgle army. Now, just like I'm painting these up to go with my army, you're of course gonna paint these in the colors that go well with yours, but I thought I would give you a couple of quick tips to bring out the best in these really terrific models. 
So I started these with a airbrush layer with orange all over, and then I sprayed a little black on the joints to kind of mimic the beetly look, kind of the colored fade to black of the joints that many beetles have. If you do a Google image search of beetles, you'll see that's a pretty common pattern. And then I'm going in with a brighter orange than I used for the base coat and giving it a very, very light dry brush to pick out the texture and detail on the carapace. After that, I'm gonna go a little lighter still. I'm mixing in a little bit of the Pro Acryl Bright Ivory into the orange to create a, a light peachy orange. The Bright Ivory is, is just terrific. I don't know if I've made a video where I haven't sung its praises, but it can mix into almost any color to provide a natural highlight. And this is the lightest of light touches on this dry brush, just hitting the very, very edges and spikes on the carapace. Especially on a model that has a lot of sharp edges, this sort of very, very light touch dry brush is very quick to do and really makes a huge difference in the level of, of detail that you can see when viewing the model, especially at tabletop distances. After that, I'm gonna go in with a little bit of the Army Painter Dark Tone to darken up the joints. I'm gonna show you a little trick for this using these makeup sponges. The Army Painter uh, Quick Shades not their new speed paints, but the original quick shades. They're almost more of a, a water-based lacquer um, that has a much thicker kind of gloopier texture than traditional water-based paints and contrast paints. And you can see here, they, they take a little while to dry, um, which we can use to our advantage, almost like an oil paint. Using these little makeup sponges, um, you can very, very quickly and easily feather these out. Um, it's easier to do this when the makeup sponge is dry. So I'm kind of you know, putting on, I watch carefully here, I got a little blob of the, the dark tone um, on the joints. And then with a dry makeup sponge, you can go in and just kind of pull the edges out to get a, a feathered look. So check this out. So with a dry makeup sponge, you just got a little bit of paint on it. You just kind of dab at the edges and it's very, very easy to fade it out into another color. I am working on top of an airbrush fade, um, but you're not getting any sort of those harsh wash lines that you might get with a, a Nuln Oil or a contrast paint when you're not doing the whole area. So if you just wanna get a little bit of a darker color into one area, the Army Painter Quick Shades plus a little makeup sponge or Q-tip works really well. Once you've got that all sorted out, it's time to go in and paint the eyes and the mandibles um, with a black. Just going in with a basic black, I'm gonna paint the eyeballs black, I'm gonna paint the mandibles black, and I'm gonna paint all of the, the kind of claws, um, spines black. Next up, paint the edge of the base, the uh, new Jolly Lark painting handles. I'll put a link to the uh, campaign for those below. They make it really easy to just spin the base around and get a nice even coat. Next up, the whole model gets a coat of satin varnish. The uh, Pro Acryl paints are pretty matte, but so let's give it a little bit of a sheen of an insect shell. Next up, we're gonna do the eyes using the Golden Interference Blue. This is a really cool special effect paint that I don't use very often. It's a little bit hard to find uses for, but when put over a, a glossy or a satin black layer, it just has this very, very cool iridescent blue effect. So we're just gonna use this on the eyes here, which is a nice quick way to get that sort of shiny buggy eye. So when painting the blue on the eye, I did get a little bit of the blue glitter on the carapace. So I just need to go in and touch that up. I'm gonna paint a little bit of black around the edges and then using the same orange that we dry brushed for, just paint that along the ridge of the carapace that's next to the eye. One of the great things about painting miniatures is that it's very rare that you can't go back and fix a mistake. Sometimes if you see that you made a mistake, you can clean the wet paint off real quick um, as soon as you make it, but often it's better to just lay you know, let it sit, let it dry, and then go back in and fix it afterwards. There you have it, a $10 piece of Nurgle, 75% discount, and I think these are just super cool models. Thanks for watching, appreciate your comments and subscriptions, love getting those below, and we'll see you next time for another Jolly Lark.